Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 71. This week we'll be talking about the very popular topic of droplet photography. And uh, specifically, I'll be going over some experiments I've done recently with different additives to water to make it uh, work better for droplet photography. I'll also be going over the setup I use to photograph water droplets. So now I want to talk a few, little bit about some additives I've been putting into water to make it more photogenic. The first one we're going to discuss is this Exanther gum. This is uh, talked about quite a bit online and uh, basically the idea here is you want to make water thicker. So if you've photographed milk droplets one of the nice things about photographing those is that being that they're thicker, it's, everything happens a little bit more fluidly and, and it's easier to sort of capture the, the droplet that you want. So, um, what can we add to water to make it thicker like milk? And basically, there's a bunch of different gum substances out there. Uh, this is the one that a lot of people online mentioned that they used. So uh, I tried it out. A lot of places online just say use it. So I wasn't sure what ratios to mix with or how to mix it. So I did some experimentation there. And what I found was a good uh, amount to use was uh, one teaspoon of the gum with uh, two cups of water. So uh, I had no idea how much I needed <laughs> before I... Uh, started experimenting and I clearly bought too large of a package. I've got multiple lifetimes worth of uh, Exanther uh, gum here, but uh, well, at least I won't run out. And uh, then I had trouble mixing it and, and getting it dissolved into the water. So what I ended up using was the uh, blender from our kitchen. And uh, basically that creates a bunch of uh, bubbles in it. And I was a little worried about that, but they actually all just naturally kind of go away after about an hour. Um, so, you know, don't worry about the bubbles that the blender adds to it. They're, they're just going to kind of dissolve out of the water. Then I had to have a way of sort of filtering out any remaining chunks. And what I found was that the finer the grain cheesecloth that I used, the better. This is, uh, you know, available in your local grocery store um, and uh, there are finer kinds I would if I was buying it again I would buy the finest kind uh, whatever grade you have though um, it'll work you just have to use more layers of it to filter uh, out the little chunks and then what I do is I put it into a jar and it keeps for a long time um, gums are also a preservative so I don't think they'll go bad I haven't had any experience I've had them sitting around for about a week so far and um, it still seems fine um, and you can sort of see I have a little bit left in this jar and it, it's pretty thick liquid here um, it's a little cloudy you can see that but actually when you're doing the droplets it's uh, a much smaller amount and you don't notice this. I also don't use this liquid directly. What I do is I usually take a 50% mixture of this liquid with water to dilute it a little bit more and then I find that it's about the consistency of like a 2% uh, milk at that point. Right now in this state it's thicker than milk. So that's my process there and I was actually quite happy with how that portion of this experimentation worked it ended up generating basically thicker water which is exactly what I wanted and it, it I did some experiments and uh, with the droplets and they turned out you know pretty nice the next thing I wanted to do this part didn't work out quite as well so I'm gonna open it up to suggestions here if any people have ideas on how to improve on the detergent side of uh, water droplets I'd, I'd be happy to hear about that but basically I, I knew that I wanted to reduce the surface tension of the water the way that industry usually does this is they add a detergent reduces the surface tension of water and the droplets should in theory become more fluid and, and kind of bounce up higher I think this is how people get taller water droplets. Um, I've seen lots of photographs of this online, but people usually don't talk about how they do it. So I was kind of 
going blind on this side. If people have um, experimented with this themselves and, and have ideas, please, please let me know. But the first thing I tried for a detergent was just soap. Um, this is just uh, the dish soap that we have at our kitchen sink. And uh, as expected, it created too many bubbles. So uh, I really didn't like that. And it, it, the results were okay, except for the bubbles, I, which I didn't want. Then I tried a, a hand lotion. Um, I was a little intimidated when I looked at the uh, ingredient list for this guy. It's kind of crazy amount of ingredients um, here. So I wasn't exactly sure what was going to be. There's actually um, the gum that we're using in this as one of the last ingredients. But... Um, yeah, I wasn't sure which ingredient was actually um, going to be the important one, which was unfortunate. But, uh, you know, I tried it out and it, it worked okay, but not as well as I was hoping. So, um, yeah, basically I moved on and uh, it also generated a few bubbles, a lot less than the soap, but more than I was hoping for. So then I went to this um, wa paste is what my wife calls it. But uh, you can see here it's actually just sodium lauryl sulfate. And uh, basically, this is a detergent that's uh, like uh, that can be used as a uh, fabric softener in, in your wash. That's what my wife uses it for. And it uh, performed decently it had the least bubbles um, it definitely changed the appearance of the water droplets and increased the height by maybe uh, 25 to 50 percent but I've seen images online where the droplets must be several inches high and uh, you know probably three or four and um, I'm definitely not getting that so you know if people have ideas on how to accomplish that or um, you know, maybe I'm just not using the right detergent. There's something that reduces the, the surface tension of the water even more. Uh, I'd, I'd love to hear what that is. But um, these these are, you know, good things to get started with. You know, just try, try whatever detergent you have in your home. And uh, it does help. But the main thing that helped a lot was the, uh, the gum over here. Adding this to water made it thicker, which uh, made a big difference in the uh, appearance and quality of the, the liquid droplets that you're photographing. So here's the setup I'm actually using for the water droplets. Uh, you can see that's sort of in the middle of a room, just a table. I actually found being able to get to all sides of this was uh, very useful when setting things up. So uh, if you have the ability to just sort of temporarily set a table in the middle of your workspace, and uh, do the photography there. That'll greatly ease uh, the setup of all of the different uh, flashes and the droplet sensor and things. But I'm um, using the camera axe. And uh, there's this really great feature in, in the more recent versions of the software called Auto Calibrate. And basically what you do with the Auto Calibrate is you hit select and then the menu tells you you know hit select again to start but uh, once you hit select once you want to uh, wait until the drop is at the tallest and then hit select and then wait until you like the collision and then hit select and that will pre-populate all of the more advanced uh, timing settings in the camera axe with uh, good values for starting and then you can just press activate to uh, you know reuse those exact same values so uh, this this is kind of like the dumb man's way of setting up the valve but uh, I use it as well it's it's really the quickest way to get uh, good droplets um, I find that you know it takes less than a minute and probably about you know maybe 20 photos or so to, to sort of get to that really sweet spot of collisions. So the, the software really makes it easy here. Um, then into uh, port number one, I have the, the camera. 
and uh, in the camera flash port number two I have this which is a multi-flash device and then into that I have four different flashes plugged and these cords all just go to the four different flashes. I'm using uh, young new flashes uh, just because they're a, a good value for the money. You do typically want to use the same uh, flash for all of the flashes that you're using or uh, there's slight variations in uh, flash lag between different brands so you'll get this ghosting uh, happening if you're using different types of flashes. The multi-flash plus would be a way of fixing that. You can adjust the delay on a per-flash basis. but uh, So it depends if you want to have different flashes, then you'd probably want to use the multi-flash plus. If you have all the same flashes, just the multi-flash will work well. Uh, you can also do this with just one flash um, if you're starting out. But uh, more flashes uh, kind of works out well. And then here's the valve sensor and that's just plugged into uh, the sensor port number one on the camera axe. The camera axe actually supports up to four valve sensors if you want to have multiple things making droplets at the same time. Uh, what else is there? Here's the background. It's just a piece of blue foam uh, taped onto this uh, Plexi gas background. Um, I also did some experimenting with um, photographing through uh, a diffuser and then you put the flashes on the back but uh, that creates a different type of photo and <clears throat> it's basically there's a million different things to try here and uh, <laughs> The one I'm going to talk about mostly today is uh, sort of using this solid background. And uh, then you've got directly underneath your valve sensor um, some kind of container. I've tried um, a lot of different ones, but uh, right now I'm using just a, a plain cup. And uh, the way you actually line up, I'm going to shake the camera a little bit here, but um, the way I get things lined up is I insert something like this. This is just, you know, a screw or a bolt works. I had this ratchet thing, and basically I use the purge button on the valve sensor to make sure the droplet's coming there, and then I can focus the camera on this, make sure that the focus is perfect, then I'll remove it, and at this point, I think we're ready to uh, take some droplet photos. So now we'll try it out, and uh, normally you would do this in a dark room, but uh, for this video I'm going to just do it in this bright room. And uh, we'll use the auto calibrate option. You just hit select there. Then it tells you basically you want to wait for the first drop to create a tall droplet. And then you'll hit select when it's a nice tall droplet. And then uh, you, it'll go sort of into the second stage and you want to wait for um, a nice collision. And then you'll hit select again. And then at that, that point it'll save off those settings and you can recreate that photo and, and go and find tweak values. So we'll uh, just try that out. So you can see there's that min button or that number down there. That's basically the number of milliseconds until um, that it's kind of uh, gone through. And I kind of know that we need a larger number. And to get to sort of forward in time, we'll hit this down arrow a few times. It'll increment by five milliseconds each time I hit it. So next time you'll see it, it's increased to 40. Um, and if you hit up a couple of times, it'll, or well, I only hit it there once, but um, you'll see that it kind of keeps it the same, or you can even go back in time if you've kind of gone past the value you want. So what you're normally doing now in a dark room is you're watching the back of your camera to sort of get when the droplet is a nice tall value. 
So it's there's a you can kind of see it. It's a decent drop. So now we hit select on there. And basically now it's it's incrementing again for the tall droplet. Or I'd actually not hit select. So now it's actually incrementing a second drop, or it's creating a second drop. You can hear two clicks now. Trying to collide them, so I know that I need to increment this one a little bit. So I hit that a few times, and we'll go back to the back of this. And you know, it's not colliding yet, so there we've got a nice one. So I'm just going to hit select now, and uh, now we're back into this menu and it's out of the auto calibrate but what it has done is it's kind of populated um, these values with reasonable values the main ones it, it sets up are uh, the drop to delay um, you can play with that if you want the second drop to come sooner or later and the other one it really plays around with is flash delay and that's uh, basically if you want the collision to get further into the scene or not. Um, so these values should then create a nice uh, droplet again. So if I just hit the activate button, we'll see how that goes. Oh, you know, I'll just bring up the preview again. And you can see that um, we captured a col nice collision there. And, uh, you know, each time you press this activate button, you should get another collision. It's that auto calibrate mode really makes it quite easy. And, you know, you can see that there's a few bubbles on here. So usually what I do is I take something and just kind of clear them out of the scene when I want a nice shot and there it's it's clear ready for another shot so I just hit activate at this point and we'll capture another beautiful collision so it's pretty much the setup I'm using remember um, because I have the lights on there'll be some ghosting in these images uh, and uh, you definitely want to do this when you're doing real photos in, in a dark room but um, for the video, it just makes things a lot easier if I'm doing them like this in a <clears throat> lit up room. And now I'll show some example photos that uh, I took during these uh, photo shoots. Thanks for watching.